by 10 a.m. The embattled former central bank executive director in charge of supervision, Justin Bajenda, was already seated waiting to face the parliamentary committee on commissions, statutory authorities and state enterprises probing the bank's unclear procedure in the closure and sale of seven commercial banks over a period of 25 years. I... Justin. Humbled by her last week's improper travel without the consent of the committee, Bajenda was quick to apologize for the inconveniences caused by her absence. I, however, would like to apologize for any inconvenience my absence from Uganda caused to the honor members. I want to assure you, Chairperson, Honor Chairperson, and the Honor Committee members that I am willing to cooperate and assist the work of the committee in any possible way I can. This is a, a polite reminder in reference to your earlier ruling that uh, when Mrs. Vajenda returns, you shall request her to hand over her passports in avoidance of unforeseen circumstances regarding her travel. I would request this committee through the chair that not only the passports, because people may have five passports, so if it is not uh, against the law, uh, Parliament can keep Madam Vajenda until the investigations are done. Because somebody will bring passports and tomorrow he's all go he goes away in the thin air. Madam Bajenda, those passports should be deposited with the, with the OC parliamentary police by the close of business today. She pleaded with the committee to set free her former bodyguard Juliet Adikorit and driver Job Triahebwa who were last week handed over to police for lying on oath. The duo was squeezed on allegations that they helped Bajenda drive out important documents from the central bank. I, however, wish to make a special request, Honorable Chair, that the bodyguard and the driver are set free in order to find justice. Our view, colleagues, is we, we don't set people free. That's not our job. The law is going to take its course. But it's also a big lesson, I think, to, our, to your colleagues. Don't lie on oath. Later, the business of the day kicked off with the central bank officials being tasked to explain circumstances under which some commercial banks were sold off without due procedure. The same day, Bank of Uganda signed the purchase of assets and assumption of liabilities agreement with the FCU. The same day, closed the same day, made and, and sold the same day. Because there was no confirmation that this bank will survive, we started confidentially or secretly looking for suitors or sorry for, for buyers. The Bank of Uganda has since taken note and that going forward, Bank of Uganda will actually put in place the guidelines and the policies to ensure that there is a literally almost a prescriptive method for how this, uh, the, 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 the guidelines and policies uh, guide the process of the purchase and assumption of agreement. It is not yet over. The ongoing Kosase process with the Bank of Uganda seems to be identifying a lot of loopholes within the management of the central bank that must be closed up. For such an institution to lack a policy on purchase agreement is something that raises a lot of questions on the credibility of this institution. Sampolona Haima, NBS, live at 9.